in Moria, we translated a text that Philippa and Fran wrote that are based on the scenes of Moria. And the, the text was translated by David Sallow uh, into Dwarvish. And we used it, uh, I set the Dwarvish text for the all-male uh, chorus. orchestra set up very much as the way a pit orchestra would be set up in an opera and you could imagine the proscenium of an opera stage to be the equivalent of the screen in the cinema and the chorus is used in a way that it's coming right off of the screen it's actually playing right through the screen and the orchestra is below it the score is really spanning um, a lot of music from the beginning of the 20th century right to the end of the 20th century. Film music grew out of opera music, and the emotional aspect of opera music and how it was used in theater just it seemed to appeal to me to, to conceptually, like, of how to work on the score. Uh, just to fill you in on a little um, bit of musical history, Billy once did have a trumpet tree which he planted in his garden. Yeah, yeah, it was, uh, it was a, a lovely thing to see, but um, mm. the council came and rooted it out. Peter and Fran time to develop themes and to... Normally on movies, composers might work for six or eight weeks, but Howard was with us um, from very early on in the shoot, so... You know, by the time of the Fellowship of the Ring... You're now writing a musical image, creating the music, a musical mirror, if you will, uh, to, to his writing. And I mention this so, so often, um, you know, even in, in other discussions about feeling like Frodo, and I really did feel like that, that I had this amazing uh, journey to take... ...team on this film, and he is totally devoted to, to somehow um, give the music a cultural significance. A section of the Encyclopedia of Moria, just so you understand, to give you some idea of this particular world that we're trying to create. Uh, Moria, it's in the year 1697, the second age of. It's underscoring the film, it's providing an emotional link, a bridge between the movie and the audience, and it's drawing the audience in. But it's doing it in such a way that it's also telling you a lot about the cultures of this world. Towards Polynesian singers. Maoris or Pacific Islanders who have and an gain another otherworldly quality to their voice. Mines being a dwarven kingdom would really um, suit having a sort of male voices, a bit like a Welsh mining choir. And they're singing in this ancient uh, dwarvish language. They're looking for some grunty voices and they thought that a kapahaka flavour would fit in with it you know, found himself in the Wellington Town Hall in New Zealand with an all Polynesian male choir. There'll be a day when it'll be very, you know, it'll be an interesting day to listen to the music of all three films because I know that Howard does see this as being his, the opportunity in his life to, to basically create a um, opera taking it out of the context of what we think of film music and what we think of as opera. So if you think you're writing an opera piece, you don't think of it as in cues, but you think of the, a, a, a much larger structure that has to have that cohesive shape. But if you go to the opera, you've watched Fellowship, which is act one, the curtain has come down, and you've gone out to intermission, you've had a drink or a snack or something, and now you've gone back and you're sitting in your seat, the curtain's going up for act two. And that, that will happen uh, December 2002. By the time we finished Two Towers, you know, Howard had really worked 
himself into the ground as it were, you know, finishing that score because we were delivering the film. So I suggested to Howard, look, have a look at Return of the King. We can show you what happens afterwards about it. We were quite lucky to have Howard Shore down in New Zealand. And uh... the third film is full of thematic materials that were hinted at earlier. In Middle Earth. That. And when we heard it on the stage, we all kind of knew, yep, no more discussion here. Can we have It's the song that sees the trilogy out, it, 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 and it has to also hold the mood and the feel. I couldn't visualize what it really meant in terms of, you know, three theatrical films as well as the extended cuts. And um, in the end, you know, it, it became a yearly, around-the-year process for him. When I'm finished everything, I, you know, with the extended cut of Return of the King, it'll be four years. We were generating enormous amounts of material. There's close to 8,000 takes of music in. It was our last day at basically the place that we did the majority of our scoring, and that was very emotional for us. On the map, that's us. It's everything. That's the, actually, that's the last time from Watford, Pete. This is it. This is our last, last time from Watford. Watford experience Hall of the Rings. Good. Goodbye to Watford. Wow. That's a, it's a sort of a part, the end of an era. We also did a photo with the whole group and the orchestra and everybody, the whole crew. Oh, wow. Oh, that would be great. How Howard doesn't want to.